highlighted to the cloud that it was terrible no, quality lame. for some reason. It might still end up being terrible quality, but it's all we got. Yeah, we, I hope we don't have a like massive freeze like yeah, we did, like we did last, last time. time. I shut Chrome. I think. Oh, actually, I got to shut Chrome right now because I think that's what did it. Uh, Chrome is the worst. It is the worst. Okay. All right, let's go. I'm ready. Wait one second. Do you need me to take the speaky toys out or take the dog just, out? I don't or care. Something? It doesn't matter. Should I? Do I need to stop? It all adds to the charm. That's right. Do you want me to stop and test anything before we just clap uh, a couple of times? I just, you want to get what you just okay? Here's what you're supposed to do. I'll do okay. it for you, even. I'm just that awesome. Okay. Do uh, it. Camera do we need to? And then I wait. Oh, oh, oh. That's it. That's it. I okay. It. Magic. What? Right? Yeah. I don't understand. What's so, What's he speaking about? Something with syncing up the audio okay. from the. So when I see the audio and I see the video and I see when I clap, when my hands go together, it takes another three seconds to see the audio. Because of the delay, I want to move so that them it together, helps them and then sync. it won't have any delay. Got it. Got it. Got it. It's the editing process. That's why we pay him the big bucks. Can you actually just pick up that pillow? Because it looks like okay. I yeah, like I don't get it. the whole couch, and now it's all trash. Do um, you? Yeah, I wonder why. Made it look all nice why behind it be trash? me, and now it looks like shit. That would be so it? weird. Why are you? Why Billy, would your couch be trash? He can't hear you because my headphones. There's are no off. way I could ever <laughs> trash your couch for you. I've never I done tell that. Him that tell him that if he's going to be like, in the background of our video, he needs to put some pants on. Oh, she says put some pants on if you're going to Those are shorts. Do they not have shorts in Scotland? No, it's too cold. <laughs> it's too cold. She shorts in Scotland. That's what boys wear shorts all year round. Okay, we're going. Is we're the live. trash can in the background a little too trashy for oh you? Oh my or... god, get the trash can out! <laughs> what did you do to the pillows? That looks so dumb. I put a blanket Hang on. Hang on a minute. The trash can on the I, I haven't hit record. Do right. I need Is to? That hit... the Does she need to hit record too? Um, on Audacity, yeah, not on Zoom. Yes, on Audacity, no. Do Zoom. I do it now? Mm -hmm. Does do that I clap? Now? Do you want her to turn it on now and also clap? Just do the claps after you turn it on. Turn right? it on and then do the clap thing. Just a couple of claps. She said, do a couple of claps. I put the like, like a few times so that he can. Help. Um. Okay. This... Hang on a minute. Why is it not working? Whatever. <laughs> Just take it out with you. No. <laughs> Just give it to me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, you can shut the door. Oh, record. Where's oh, oh I'm pressing the wrong button. Oh, I'm the fucking floorboard with the oh, nails. I'm sorry. The I love you. Thank you. You're the best. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. I'm All right. the dog in. Okay. <laughs> I look like a stupid right? these headphones. I know I do too. We have to get the cool like ear ear things because oh, I don't know. so dumb. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Right, I'm gonna hit record. Okay. Do I do it again? Yeah. Okay, I think that looks good. Okay. Here we, we could, are. We could like chat shit for the first two minutes till we calm down and then like do an intro no. and then Billy could just cut that bit out. That's true. I just don't want to like I'm so afraid that like my computer will run out of memory or like okay. it will crash. So I don't want to chat for too long because I'm praying okay. like we're on a time limit. It scares me. Yeah, this is enough just so that. Okay. Okay. I see what yeah. you mean. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so nervous. Okay. Um, I'm super Hi. excited. <laughs> I'm super excited. And also um, a little terrified right now. We can do it. We can do it. We've been looking forward to this first just so long that I can't believe I it's actually, the time is actually here. It still feels like a little bit of a... It's a dicey move. Made up. <laughs> yeah, but we're gonna do it. I am surrounded by so many things. I wish, actually, I'm grateful, but I also wish you could see, look what I have here in front of me. All right, just so you know, I have my, my whiskey. I'm gonna say it the right way. My whiskey, yeah. which if you can What can't, kind do you have, Karen? Um, it's Duars. Yeah. So I was at the liquor store looking because I want to be authentic. And this is what you do when you're Scottish, right? You have your wee drum. Like, let's go okay. have a wee yeah. drum, right? I've got my wee drum here. Okay, see? Now, do you drink it neat? Like just straight up? Yeah. Oh, you're hardcore. 
I maybe stole, with some ice. I stole my husband's big fancy bourbon glasses and his That's big, a nice glass. Big fancy whiskey. He's like a whiskey drinker expert, but he hates scotch whiskey. Just so you know. He's so uncultured. Right? No. I have never had it, so I don't even know. Oh god. Please don't puke at the beginning oh, of god. our podcast. That would be way amateur hour. All right, I am an experienced drinker, just not of this. All right, here goes. I'm pouring it. So there. you have Jewers, and I bought Jura, which I've never tried before. I normally, I'm not like a expert whiskey drinker, but I would probably go for like a Talisker or a Lefroig. But I bought this because it was on offer in the shops, so it was cheap. My gosh, I can't wait. All right, I'm gonna try my best. I feel a little, I am I feel a little, I feel like I'm 16 and I'm like stole, I stole my parents' liquor out of their liquor cabinet. Oh, I'm getting really weird chocolate you're not audio. 16? Oh my god, right. I know. I totally look at oh oh god. Like that's what it smells like. That same it smell good. when you're like don't drink and they're like, what is that smell? Yeah, it's the water of life. Oh, and then I feel bad because my ice cube had melted. A little so it's not even straight up right now that's okay um are you gonna be drunk by the end of this podcast i hope so that's all right it's okay it's actually You'll not gross it. it tastes yeah. a little bit like grass clippings <laughs> i've never heard it explained that way before <laughs> like the, the the swallow going down is okay. Um, it's not like, I was really expecting it to be like revolting, but it's not. But then the aftertaste kind of comes in and punches you in the back of the throat. And then, mm, uh, I mean, it's not it's good. good. It's really good if you've got a cold and you want mm. to get rid of your cold. Over here, our solution would be to make a hot whiskey. Hot hot whiskey, hot water, some lemon, some honey, fill yourself full of alcohol and, the feel and better. then sleep, sleep it off. Yeah, yeah. That, kind of, that sounds a little magical. You know what I do yeah. love, but it's such like a chick drink, but it's like my favorite is I do like whiskey and hot apple cider. Oh, that sounds nice, which but is delicious. really, really inauthentic. I and I know, don't know but if I can call you my friend anymore. I, come on, I'm super doing this right now. But this is a blended Scotch whiskey. And you said, I think you have to have it be single malt in order to be like legit, right? Yeah, it's a bit better. Right. Yeah. And then I'm going to also have a Corona. <sighs> <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> because I'm an American and I really like Corona. Don't worry, we'll teach you. By the time we've done like... 10 oh, that's better. Mm, that's delicious. And You'll then be I, a converted whiskey right, drinker. But I'm going to try that. Kroner is my tracer, my chaser. Do you have chasers? That's probably that's no. like such a girly thing. Whiskey with a whiskey chaser, maybe. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Oh, I don't enjoy it. Mm, but I'm going to do it. If you're, if you're a real Scottish hardened skint student drinker, Maybe not nowadays, it's probably changed, but in my day it was um Buckfast. Buckfast? It, yeah. What is that? Buckfast like is this really disgusting. I think it's made by monks or something. What? And it's and it's this, it tastes like cough medicine. Oh. And it's some kind of weird wine, not wine, fortified wine thing um i'm sure somebody else can let me know where i'm going wrong here it <laughs> has been maybe at least 25 if not 30 years since i've drunk it um but it was the thing for it cost back in the 80s yeah and the 90s it cost like two pounds a bottle you could get super drunk on it and so i think that's what all the al al alcoholics we drink as well but fast 
It just sounds like you're saying breakfast wrong. Yeah, no, it's disgusting. (laughs) It sounds disgusting. You probably can't even get it in the United States. I don't know. I can't believe how many. Okay, I have a question. Because when I went to the liquor store, they literally was like an entire wall of like eight thousands and we do call it scotch sorry scotches and I wanted to know I was like I bet you and I did I posted this on Instagram I was like I bet you 10 bucks if I go to Scotland and I try to buy some whiskey there's probably like 10 choices no. and are these even really real scotch of whiskeys? course there's not 10 choices well I just thought like there must be just like this beautiful like like the best of the best. You have a whole wall filled. Just because yeah, I think yeah, America yeah. is so ridiculous and yeah. over in a super in a big supermarket. Yeah. So our supermarkets aren't actually always as big as yours because everything's bigger it's in the United so States. Ridiculous. Yeah. But in a big supermarket, there would be a whole whiskey section. And okay. not only that, actually, but now in Scotland, there's been a big rise in gin. So there's oh, like yeah. a whole whiskey section and a whole gin, like craft, Scottish craft gin section. Right. And they're using yeah. the whiskey barrels for the gin. So they all are, because we learned about that are in they? one of my tours. Yes. Mm. Yeah, because they're like reusing their, because, you know, to be authentic Scotch whiskey, sorry, American, um, it has to be like in the barrel fermenting in Scotland for like three years yeah. and one day. And so I think there's some like well, a time where they're. This one, yeah. I didn't know until I bought it, said that it's been fermented. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's been oh. fermented in American ex-bourbon barrels. Oh, see <laughs> Well, that's why I was wondering, because everything in America is so over the top and so overdone that that's what that was what I was alluding to for the liquor store is like, are these really just are these really Scotch? Yeah, they will Scottish be. brands or are these mm-hmm. just Americans being like, we're making Scotch whiskey and here's all the kinds so we can get them in the well, store. Well, next time you're there buying yeah. your next bottle of whiskey, take a oh, photo God. and let me see and I'll let you know. But yeah, they probably are. I did take a photo when I was there because I could not believe how many choices there were. But this woman, I told mm-hmm. you this on Instagram or at least in my little Instagram video, like I'm just sitting there and I'm taking pictures for you so I could ask you like, do I do this one or this one? And then I realized I can't take a picture. There's like 50,000 bottles and then this older woman comes straight back she comes in to the front of the store walks straight back grabs her bottle and like starts to go to the checkout and I was like excuse me with like my mask on you know and I was like oh, wait, wait. and she was I was she was like yes and I was like um I take it that's a good bottle right because that you went right for it like you seem to know exactly what you're doing is that right and she was like yeah but I'm like well what is it about it like what is is it like the flavor what about the flavor is it what does it taste like and she was like all I know is that like my grandmother drank it my mom drank it and this is the only thing that I will drink and I was like I'm in like I want a I want a recommendation right I, it's it's yeah I do you know I you're not asking the right person I'm not an expert whiskey drinker but I don't know if I would have said yours was the best of the best I mean it doesn't taste good <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know we'll that get I you a thinking. better one for next okay. time. Okay, but I feel good. Like I popped my Scottish whiskey chair. Should we explain who we are before oh. we get any further? Sure. What you go first? <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually friends. We've known each other for how long? Five years. I think I I first started stalking you on YouTube in maybe like 2015. That's a long time ago. I know. I know. Yeah. And then we met in person when Karen came over to do an art retreat in Scotland. And I wasn't actually part of the art retreat, but you crashed I it kind of for a night. crashed it for a yeah. night. And that was it. And you were the most yeah. fun. You were the you most were the most fun, fun ever. <laughs> I was like, I want to hang out with you. I know I was sad you couldn't continue on, but you yeah. crashed on like the couch of the of the lodgings. You were like a proper like. I felt like I was having flashbacks to college when you're like friends I think, come in on the train, they crash on the couch. I was like, oh, I like this girl. She's super cool. I think we drank quite a lot that night as well. You and I had a really fun time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. And we've been kind of doing stuff ever since. We both do art as our main jobs and we do art, online art classes. And we have done an art retreat in Scotland. We actually did it in a castle. We a rented. Haunted castle. Yes. Yeah, we did. Yes. Yes, so we did. We might have some stories at some point about that castle, not today, but I'm sure they'll come out in the wash. Yes, I'm sure that they will. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I, yeah. So yeah, I'm the, I am an American, as you probably may have figured. Um, and I'm obsessed with Scotland and I'm not sorry. <laughs> I, I, my dream is to, oh, <laughs> what was that? What was that? My, <laughs> My dream is to honestly buy a cottage um, like on the foothills of the highlands and just like stare at the mountains all day, drinking a pint, reading books and like drawing. That's my, that's my, actually my literal retirement goal is that, and to make enough money so that I can like fly my kids over so they can come hang out for a few weeks. And then- that the only reason you're friends with me? Cause I'm Scottish? Yes. <laughs> No, but my husband's very supportive. So I'll I will tell you the one backstory, which was after I went on the retreat, the first retreat in 2017, where I did meet mm -hmm. you, Lucy, and I came back and I was into like I fell into like a depression after I got back because I wasn't there anymore, and I was just like talking about it and talking about it. And my husband was like, Jesus, like shut up about it. If you love it so much, then just make it so that you have to go there all the time, every year. Why don't you do an art retreat? And I was like, oh, oh my God. And I literally like, before I was even like, oh, finished gasping, I like ran over to this, my computer in this very room that you're looking at, except my desk was right there. And I jumped on Facebook Messenger to you, Lucy. And I was like, I'm coming to Scotland. Do you want to do every, I'm doing an art retreat. Are you in? And you literally were like, yes. That you just like messaged me right back. And you were like, oh my God, yes. And I, was like, yes. I don't need asking twice on something like that, <laughs> right? I tell you. And I was like, this is why I love me some Lucy Brandon. We're just on the same page yeah. for everything. So yeah, yeah this then, is just an extension. Cause now is. we decided that we can actually just sit and talk shit yes. about our scottish obsession yes we are gonna tell you right now that we probably don't know what we're talking about oh no we definitely we don't. will probably get <laughs> lots of facts wrong we are yes. not going to give you anything that is academically correct don't go and get some academic oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tome. is that what it's called a tome, a tome. academic tome and quote us because we said the wrong year for something oh, because for sure. we're going to be absolutely rubbish. Yes. But well, we just want to have, we're obsessed with fairies and stone circles and ghosts yeah. and Insane. mythical creatures yes. and yes. anything like that. So we thought, what better way? talk about it on a podcast <laughs> that's exactly right no it is and I just feel like and the reason that I'm so obsessed with it is that there's just such a lack of all of that here mm -hmm. in the states like there's just no like folklore <laughs> at all I, I know that the Native Americans I'm sure have super cool yeah. stories but I also know that I'm totally ignorant to those super cool stories so I can't even tell you what they were um but I do it is a goal of mine to actually start researching some of that too so I can because mm -hmm. I know but like as far as just regular Americans like we got nothing we all came from Europe originally at least yeah. the first like at least my ancestors did so um I just just I love I love folklore. I lo I'm in love with all of it. I think it's so, mm -hmm. so cool. And I want to see if like just the, the inkling of possibilities of little fairy winged beings. And, and if it's all just a, a product of people's imaginations from a superstitious time and too much mead and whiskey, like that's equally cool. Like I'm down with all of it. I just love I don't all know. Of it. I want to believe that it must have come from somewhere. I know. I I'm, so. I'm in that camp that if someone tries to give me all the rational explanations for everything, I shut my ears off and yeah. go, la, 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 I don't want to hear 
it. <laughs> well, and I think that's why I love you too, because you're like all in. And I'm like, yes, like I am all in. Like I just went to Iceland last, last summer in 2019. And they were like, oh, this is a fjord and here's a waterfall. I'm like, yeah, but like, tell me about like the elves that like used to hang out and they're like oh jesus like oh you're one of them like here what this goes. looks for you i'm like what about the hidden people like there's Don't just have loads of gnomes and yes they have like gnomes and giants and elves and hidden people i'm like that is fascinating i could i want to listen to it all day so i just love this stuff it's just fun nothing but fun you know i love going to an old ruined castle or a forest or mm -hmm. something and letting my imagination go wild and imagining mm -hmm. like over here I don't know if you get them in the states but over here we get all these copses of trees so a cop do you get copses of trees in the states so I I'm sure yes but I know where you're going with this because we've talked about it before yeah like so like fairy a, rings a, and whatnot a, co a copse yeah. of trees is like oh obviously over here because there were um i might be speaking rubbish here <laughs> i'm just Bear gonna drink i'm just drinking you're fine <laughs> <laughs> there were like you know buildings and things built in the landscape from you know hundreds of years ago and then maybe the location of the building changed to somewhere else and that piece of land got farmed and it was too much bother for the farmer to get rid of all the huge big stones that were the foundation in a, of an old church or something yeah that they just farm round them and they right. just kind of go round in a circle and they leave that bit in the middle of the field and then these trees sprout up and you get these lovely rings of trees that just sprout up in the middle of a field and every time I see one my imagination mm -hmm. goes all the way over <laughs> here to that's a magical fairy dwelling that the beings have originated from <laughs> so good i'm in i'm all in i yeah. love it i love it um yeah i'm all in and i can't wait to explore and talk about all all of those things um so we promised start. what was to say we promised we wouldn't chat for too long without getting to the point so i feel like we should dive in to actually our let's first start. okay let's start okay are you gonna start who's going first will i go first you oh then the i kind of feel like i have to go first because of the choice of subject do it i'm ready is that okay with you a hundred percent yes also it means that i get out of the way and i can I relax i'm a little jealous about that i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep drinking while you tell me stories but you actually might learn from my mistakes so by the oh. time you do yours you'll be way better you'll be like i'm not doing it like that i'm gonna remember <laughs> let's see if we can salvage this episode <laughs> yeah so i have lots of notes but first of all before i start i'm gonna say that we are gonna talk about unicorns we're starting off with unicorns which i am sure that most people realize is the national animal of Scotland. Okay, but I beg to differ because as much as I've been obsessed with Scotland for about 20, since my first visit, which was 1996, um, I want to say, 95 or 96 was my first visit. And even though I've still loved it this whole time, I didn't know that the unicorns was the national animal until my trip with Ivy in 2017. And when really? I found out, I was like, what in the hell? I'm like, of course the unicorn is Scotland's national like animal. I was like, oh, of course it is. Like, I was like, okay, well, reason number 5,023. Well, I love this place. Like, come I on. It's ridiculous. You know, I think I think some people don't like it. They're like, oh, that's awful. We don't even have oh. a real animal. We've got this imaginary animal. It's like my favorite I part. I love freaking, it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Like to have the balls for a whole country to be like, we're going to choose this fancy creature. creature. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I love yeah. it. I know. I am. I will tell a little story before I dive in to okay. this subject that I'm going to have to watch how I tell this. <laughs> 
but maybe we'll have to cut it out. You can okay. tell me whether we have to okay. cut it out. Okay. But, Never cut um, it out. Okay. But I used to work in a school and there was one day that one of the classes were doing, um, and I was the art teacher, by the way, I wasn't this, this classes teacher, but the one of the classes were doing something like, um, they had to draw what they wanted to be when they grew up. Okay. Yeah. And these were like six or seven year olds and about apparently the teacher was complaining because apparently three of the girls said, I want to be a unicorn when I grow up. <laughs> and how old were these kids? Six or seven. Oh, that's sweet. And, um, the teacher was saying that that was really pie in the sky ridiculous. Like, of course, you can't be a unicorn when you grow up. And I just thought it was the most amazing thing. So I was like, if you're going to be anything when you grew up, right? Be a unicorn, right? I know. I want to be a magical horse. No, tell me. I actually know very little about real unicorns. So please okay. tell us. I'm so excited. I've been doing lots of research and I'm just going to name where I got most of my information from before we get okay. into it. Okay. So I got mostly I mostly googled I have to admit well, I mostly googled. it is 2021 that's what you do but I got information from the National Trust for Scotland website the National Trust for Scotland is the organization that has lots of castles throughout Scotland so National Trust for Scotland website the Scotsman and the National Scot which I think are newspapers and then I found some other websites called Scottish at Heart maybe oh, you should like check that. some of these out yeah Celtic Life Ooh. Celtic Life and then there were some other ones called Life Science and today I found out.com and lastly one about maritime heritage for some strange reason huh I don't know why so <laughs> awesome I'm ready bring it you did a lot of reading yeah you did so what do you think when what picture do you get in your head when you think of a unicorn um that's a good question I mean when I think of unicorns I think of them always being usually standing near or around in a forest with usually water nearby and like a fancy maiden. They're I feel like there's always some beautiful girl attached to them in some way, mm -hmm. sometimes with wings, sometimes without wings. I hope you'll talk about the wing thing. Um, <clears throat> uh oh, <laughs> what, what, what do they look like? Are they're they always color? white. They're always white. Yeah. Always. Well, we have we have a unicorn on our website when Scott when not. Yeah, we do. And it, in my head, they always have something in them that's a rainbow, like yes. rainbow oh, horn, call. right, right, rainbow tail. Um, they fart rainbows, yes. and magic comes out of their rainbow yes. farts or whatever. Yes. And they're these... solitary. They're not. They don't like travel in herds. You don't see yeah. like a unicorn herd. <laughs> But actually, That'd actually, cooler. they you didn't did. always look like that. Really? Yeah. Shut up. So the funny thing is that, so the first part that I'm going to talk about is actually not really connected to Scotland. And then I'm going to move on to the Scotland part. But awesome. in history, people <clears throat> actually believed unicorns to be a real animal they didn't think that they were mythical. Mm -hmm. They actually thought they were real. I think it came from around the time of people starting to travel and then going to foreign lands mm -hmm. and seeing animals that they didn't quite understand because they were different to their own sure, species sure. that they had in their right. own place. And then, and then kind of going back and telling that story to one person who then passed it on to someone else and someone else and then right. the creature kind of developed into something weird right that actually wasn't what it was but i'm not going to dwell too much on the boring reality because in my yeah. mind unicorns are still real <laughs> so 
they believed that they were real for a really long time. And you got a lot of the images right in some ways. They always are seen as being these solitary animals that are really sort of strong and calm and innocent yeah. with this like power to them but they're actually unusual in that they are a, an animal that doesn't have any evilness to it or right. oh, yeah. you know yeah. a lot of other mythical creatures there's like an evil side or mm -hmm. they're they're ferocious or they're a danger to humans right. but unicorns are different in that they're this this sort of mythical creature that hides in the forest and it's really hard to find them and it's really hard to tame them but they're not really any danger to humans like they wouldn't actually fight humans mm -hmm. and they it was long believed that their horns were a way of purifying poisoned water so there was a story about um this snake that had poisoned a watering trough and the unicorn would dip its horn in the water and it would get rid of the poison in the water mm -hmm. which means that the horn had healing powers so in history they always like collected uni unicorn horns and powdered I'll talk about that in a minute but powdered them up and made this like healing elixirs so mm. unicorns were these creatures with these magical properties that could heal um people that had been poisoned or get rid of poison in things mm. and they are difficult to capture that's always something that's spoken about but who can capture them virgins oh virgins that's oh. why you have this image of this maiden mm. because there's this idea that to collect a unicorn you have to set a trap for a unicorn and oh. the trap is to find a forest and find a, a nice clearing in the forest right and then and get a virgin <laughs> I can just imagine this, like the dude who's trying to catch them, like, yo, where are the virgins? We're trying to catch this unicorn. Can all the virgins come with me? Like, how do you, it's like not a subtle thing. <laughs> like you, have you had sex? Oh, no, you can't. Have you, excuse me, have you? Oh, go ask Jenny. I'm sure, sure, she's super innocent. <laughs> go ask Jenny to get you with a unicorn. <laughs> like, I just one. <laughs> make that happen. <laughs> Sorry, I'm oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, where, I like the practice. Like, I want to know where did they get that from? Right? It's ridiculous. But so this virgin <laughs> has to sit on, like, you know, her tree stump or fallen log, and just wait quietly, and then the unicorn will come to her. And so hunters would like sit in hiding at the other side of the clearing. The guys, the virgin who rounding up Jenny. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> And then what they is bait, the virgin's bait for the unicorn for the unicorn. <laughs> for the catcher's guy. And then what would they do? And then they try to get them and then cut the horns or because they wanted the horns for their magical properties. Mm. So they apparently would make drink drinking cups from the horn. So this drinking cup from the horn would purify any poison water that was in it, which is why. They were especially uh, desired by royalty because mm. kings and queens were, of course, always of course. scared about being poisoned. Right, right. And having poisoned food or water. Right. And there's actually a story, which I'll tell in a bit because it's in the wrong order. It's connected okay. with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, really quickly, I, I wonder if that's, it's almost reminds me of like how people from other cultures like covet, like, like the rhinos, the rhinoceros horns and like how the rhinos are like, there's like two left in the world of the white rhino because yeah. the same thing, they think the horns have like magical powers and then they, there's that like still continues today, except these poor yeah. creatures are real and they're like getting poached to death. 
But can I tell you something that's going to really, like, you're going to say I didn't want to hear it, burst my bubble? It was rhino horns. <gasps> oh, see? I know. Yeah. That, like, because, breaks my heart. Because they didn't, they couldn't really find the unicorns. Yeah. Unicorns were so magical that they can actually be caught. So all the hunters would, like, get rhino horns or <gasps> narwhal horns. Yeah. And, Oh, that's um, so cool. pretend they were unicorn horns when right. they weren't really yeah I know oh, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard I know it's so sad isn't it it's so sad so unicorns have actually they thought that they were real up until I was gonna say not that long ago but <laughs> it was maybe a few hundred years <laughs> right you're like, and 2021, since I'm a yeah. believer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still a believer, so they're still real for me because I would love to think that I go into my local forest and there's one hiding in the woods somewhere. I know. But they did you know that they'd be mentioned in the Bible? Well, I only know that because I thought I was doing unicorns for a hot second. And when I Googled it and I saw that, I was like, what? And then I, I, I wanted to dive deep. And then you were like, no, I'm doing them. And I was like, crap. All right. I'm not going to read. So all I know is that, yes, I did know, but I didn't read on because I knew then very quickly thereafter that you were going to cover it. So I didn't want to spoil it. So you tell me, give yourself spoilers. Yeah. So what about that? Well, um, I'll get to the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> if, they were mentioned eight times in the old Testament. Oh, wow. So I'm not going to quote them all because A, is a bit boring and B, uh, the website that I found used lots of these and those and I thought it would be a bit difficult to read. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but there is one quote that said that God brought them out of Egypt. And it said he, when God brought them out, oh no, when God brought them out of Egypt, I'm guessing it's the people that he, don't. Don't come for me. I'm not good on my Bible stuff. So Did fine. he save people from Egypt? That God yes. had the God had the strength of a unicorn. Oh, well, that's kind of ties in with what you were saying about going to other lands and cultures and seeing animals. They probably yeah. were seeing like antelopes and the rhinos. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're, and then like coming back and trying to describe, this is like biblical times or whatever, trying to describe these animals, right? You're like, it's kind of like a horse, but it but it's bigger and it has a horn, right? And so all of yeah. a sudden that's like, you're imagining what a unicorn yeah. might look like. Well, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the sensible way of looking at it. No, I know. It's just, I'm just trying to envision how that would come about and you yeah. you had mentioned that and I yeah. hadn't really thought about that as a possibility before but actually in those times so in mm -hmm. ancient texts and literature unicorns didn't always so we imagine this like white horse with you know a flowing tail I don't know about there's no mention of wings anywhere that's I don't know where that's come from I but guess that actually, would be like a Pegasus. Isn't a Pegasus like a unicorn with wings? Yeah, that, that's maybe Pegasus. that'll have to be a different. I'm only mentioning that because it's the unicorn on our website has wings. Yeah, I th but I think that maybe possibly with um, it must modern be... day times that like, things have evolved and unicorn has become such an iconic image in modern yes. culture of kids oh yeah for sale yeah basically. it's so alive and well like you can go yeah. to target today and go buy something with a unicorn on it mm -hmm. today yeah it's fascinating isn't it but they a lot of the people that wrote about them in those times said that they they were small they were the size of a goat oh yeah they had but they had like cloven hooves rather than um Oh. The horse hooves oh interesting I did not know that yeah and some people said that the horn was black rather than white and it was really long and there's a really uh well-known text which I hadn't heard of so it's not that well known but it was referenced in every website I looked 
from the fourth century BC, so that's like even way before biblical times, a guy, again, I'm guessing it's a guy, because that would have been the people that wrote then, called Stesius, mm -hmm. Stesius, somebody called Stesius, and he wrote a book about India, and he mentioned unicorns, and he described them as as big as horses, with white bodies, red heads, dark blue eyes, and a multicolored horn on its forehead. So I don't know where that came from, but there's various different descriptions of unicorns. <laughs> yeah, so I think that the, the modern day description of a unicorn has yeah. just been like made more beautiful or more... I wonder who in history decided like at some point the stories right became like got twisted to then have to do with something that was white like how did we get from that to like today's no idea thing that I was describing do you know what I mean like yeah I, I wonder it must be some tale I wonder Google didn't tell me that <sighs> um, yeah I know I know we'll just have to make it up it's fascinating though. Tell us. So why did Scotland decide that they wanted the unicorn to be their national symbol? Well, I'm going to get onto that. Other than the fact that they're the coolest country of all. That's, I know, but before I get onto that, I'm just going to really quickly tell you that I found this super interesting. What's that? That there was a medieval cookbook that included a recipe on how to cook Unicorns. Oh, it's kind of gross. Oh, that is gross. Mm -hmm. Why would you cook disgusting. it? Although I guess if you're only stealing its horn for its magical powers, then they're like, the "Well, horn. what do you you do with the rest? Let's just eat it." Well, I don't even know if it was the rest of it or if it was how to cook the horns mm. as such. But the horns were the most valuable, and actually, in the 16th century, a unicorn horn was sold to the Pope. And it was the equivalent of 18,000 pounds. Now, wow. I'm not even sure whether that's 18,000 pounds in today's money mm. or in the 16th century's money, because I also find evidence of one being sold in the, the late 1500s and it was sold to Windsor Castle so it was or it's shown in Windsor, Windsor Castle oh, really? something to do with the royalty and it was worth 10,000 pounds in the 1600s wow which I did a translation if if this website's correct because I don't know whether it's 10,000 pounds in today's money it, it must not be it that. must be then because if there's only one and the one there's one in the, I wonder if it's still it's in Windsor yeah worth um one million seven hundred sixteen thousand. Oh my god 400. do they still have it do you know i have no idea oh no okay. idea. google that next i know that, that's awesome i know if there's only so, one then the one million would be would sound correct mm -hmm. it was debunked that it actually was like a narwhal tusk yeah or something. yeah poor things I know. They're not dissimilar though. Well, they kind of call narwhals the unicorns of the sea, yeah, don't they? They do. Yeah. So I think some people think that that's where the idea of unicorns come from, is seeing animals oh. like narwhals and right. But, yeah. Fascinating. I'm sure there I'm sure there's still some horses with horns somewhere and wings. <laughs> I'm sure of it. No, I, I could see it coming out of like a fanciful description. You have these people that haven't been anywhere and they show up on the shores of India and Egypt yeah. and they're I seeing know. all sorts of animals that don't exist in their land. So I, 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 that actually is equally though, like mystifying and cool. I don't feel like that takes away from mm -hmm. the myths of them. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of neat. And it's Definitely. totally understandable. And how amazing would that be to like just live in your tiny village your whole life and no one's ever left and you're the one that gets to leave and go and travel to one of these places and yeah. see these animals and then have to bring back these 
you know, they didn't have cameras, they didn't have smartphones, they had to like draw it or, or just use their imaginations mm -hmm. to like recreate what they were seeing. I could totally see how a unicorn would come It's out like, I'm, I'm gonna get the artist wrong, but I think it might have been Judah maybe. There is like a famous drawing of, um, I think it's a rhino and it was basically the artist at the time had, just drawn it based on descriptions of somebody who'd explored that country because he'd never seen that animal yeah imagine imagine yeah. never seeing anything yeah uh, it's like people that live in countries where they never experience snow and right. then they experience snow for the first right. time right right and it like knocks them sideways they and it like knocks them sideways it. yeah yeah and you know what actually actually um reminded me of that and I or like made me pause to think of that was actually reading the foreword of this Scottish legends uh -huh. book that I had forgotten that I purchased the last time I was in Scotland and I picked it up yesterday it was published in 1889 and the preface of it was so this author wanted to um record some uh, tales before they were lost and this what I found so interesting is that he mentions in this uh, is it okay if I read like a paragraph I'll let you yeah okay I'm not stealing your thunder am I it's okay it's a good <laughs> that was the answer yes <laughs> but I'll let it go <laughs> I'll just said... interrupt you later okay. yeah oh I'm sure you will <laughs> You know, you know what I thought was so cool is he said, each narrative in the present volume, so he's writing this in 1889, is a veritable legend huh? extant in the, in the district to what it refers, probably, however, better known to previous generations than to this present one. The extraordinary changes brought about in recent times by the introduction of the locomotive engine, the steamboat, and the electric telegraph have far exceeded the wildest dreams of the most imaginative and have in most respects tended to lessen the interest in local historical incidences. The whole physical aspect of the country is being changed to such an extent that the rising generation can scarcely comprehend the simple primitive life of formal times when each locality with its local associations and traditions well nigh comprise a world in itself to its inhabitants. And then the last sentence says, now all this is being changed and surely it is a good thing to gather up and preserve all interesting legends ere they pass into oblivion and to hand them down to successive generations, not orally as in formal times, but by means of the all powerful press. Wow. Isn't that I, extraordinary? He was writing that then. Can yes. you imagine if he knew what it was like now? Well, that's, I was like literally blown away when I read that. Cause I was like, I mean, he's like, look at that, you know, like these are amazing times. Mm. Like we better write these things down because people are going to have no interest in this, you know, now with all these yeah. changes, this improvement comings. And it's just fascinating to me. So that's, Reading that is what made me realize, you know, want to reach back into, I know, think about those times where, so take that and then go back 300 more years, right? And these people are in these isolated villages. And that's what I'm saying. Like, and one dude, like, managed to hop on a ship and go to India. Like, yeah. and then you're coming back to these people, like, who just have experienced literally nothing and trying to, be like mom you should have seen you know <laughs> like this weird this animal that has a thing coming out of his I, head right like no it's it's awesome i i wish i could like hop in a time machine and go I back know. and experience oh, I... maybe everything apart from the toilets and the smell <laughs> <laughs> that's legit the medicine yeah, yeah, there's a few perks to being in modern day. And the witchcraft burnings, yeah. that would be another problem. But yeah, yeah, yeah. True that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I didn't mean so to interrupt. I, Go ahead, no, and finish up. I'm just trying to get my where I was. Um I've lost. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so in the 1600s there was 
papers on how magical unicorns were and all the things that they could cure. And some of the things that they could cure were scurvy, ulcers, melancholy. I love that. I love how they said that that unicorns could cure melancholy. Right. Because to me, yeah, there's do. nothing more beautiful than a unicorn. Of course it cures melancholy. I know, right? Oh, you're like, that's obvious. <laughs> I know. Um fainting spells. And another one that was listed, I thought this hilarious. It's called the King's Evil. Ooh. I know it sounds really disgusting, right? Yeah. The King's Evil. Yeah. It's like one of these old time illnesses that we maybe don't have anymore. Mm, I don't know. I wonder what that means. <laughs> yeah, apparently it was something to do with TB. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I thought King's Evil sounded yeah. better. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, definitely so now we move on to scotland because okay. that's what we want to know isn't it we want to know why why unicorns have anything to do with scotland i'm actually not sure exactly why but at some point scotland decided that they were going to adopt the unicorn as their symbol that they used on all their heraldry and yeah. Is it on the money? Was it ever on your money? On coins. I thought so. And uh, it's on coins, coats of arms, seals. I've seen some yeah. coins in the Hunterian Museum, which is in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of the university. There's a really nice museum connected to the university. And I went in there one time and saw coins mm -hmm. from, I think, like the 1500s, sometime like that, with unicorns mm -hmm. on them. So the, the kings started, King Robert in the late 1300s started adopting the unicorn as the national animal. And I think really that a lot of it is to do with, or I don't know whether it's this is done in retrospect, if people are kind of looking back, you know, us Scots were so proud of being Scottish and there's been a big long history of um fighting with the english mm -hmm. and wanting our independence and being taken over by the english and wanting to be independent from england and i better not get into scottish nationalism You're too much trouble. <laughs> but there's a long history of that and the traits of the unicorn seem to match alongside mm. this idea that Scottish people are being um, a bit elusive and independent and separate, but at the same time, very fierce and proud and courageous. Mm. So I don't know whether it was, I, I don't know, are the traits of the animal taken on by the country or does the country choose the animal because of the traits of the people that we yeah. want to portray right. oh i love that's very deep yeah. lucy bryden very am well i so deep? Done. so deep that was yeah well the first time i saw the symbol was i was at the queen's hollywood palace on the uh -huh. Royal Mile, and I looked up at the side of the building, and I was like, there's unicorns on the building, and I was yeah. like, heck yeah, they are, and then that's when our guide or somebody was like, oh yeah, it's the national animal, and I was like, of course it is, of course it is, like, no. so, so cool, but I like, I like your theory, I like that, and I think that there's definitely something in the, the, this, idea of the animal the traits of the animal representing the traits of the mm -hmm. people of the country you know scots are very proud and independent and mm -hmm. a bit fierce and a bit i was gonna say weird but maybe that's <laughs> the wrong word <laughs> you're scottish you can say whatever you want <laughs> I'm the one who has to be careful, not you. <laughs> like elusive and 
stubborn. Art, oh, wait, stubborn. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I'm allowed to say that, but you're not. I know. Hard to capture. Um, oh, yeah, right. I like that. Yeah. So originally, Scotland actually had two unicorns on their oh. shields. There were two unicorns there, but obviously there was the Union of the Crowns in 1603. So um, I'm not going to go into too much Scottish history here, but when James VI of Scotland became James I of England, mm -hmm. do you know about that? I do shockingly okay mm -hmm. so i think it was when queen elizabeth the first died and she didn't have an heir so he became then the king of england as well and mm -hmm. he united the two countries so when he did that he replaced one of the unicorns with a lion because that mm -hmm. was england's national animal mm -hmm. there's actually quite a lot of history of um lions and unicorns being enemies <laughs> interesting so but it's interesting There's, that the lion, which has nothing to actually do with England, is the English national, <laughs> right? <I know. laughs> it's like so much not English. <laughs> it's got absolutely nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Although, did they used to have lions in the Tower of London? Not natively. I'm sure if they did, they were very much brought there from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I yeah. think they were... Yeah. But I'm maybe england i don't want to get into arguments yeah yeah, yeah. like we said we Scotland don't actually don't know anything <laughs> but maybe england chose the line for the same reason because they're like we're strong and fierce and we right? can take over everybody right oh i'm sure they did and scotland's like well you might be strong and fierce you could take over everybody you can't find us that's right because we're hiding in a forest yes and the virgins can find that's us right. <laughs> <laughs> so good so good well done, I, know. I know so there's a, there's this famous rhyme about the lion and the unicorn i think it was in um i want to say i'm gonna get this so wrong somebody can correct me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm well, maybe I can't actually remember. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Well, um, way to wrap it up. Is that All right, you got you got to wrap it up. Okay. Yeah, but do you want to know? Okay, quickly before I go. Yeah. Before we get on to your subject, that I'm going to tell you some fun facts. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's a good idea. Yeah. Some, there's some fun facts because I actually didn't speak about unicorns in Scotland very much, but there's some fun facts about unicorns in Scotland that actually you, there, Scotland has this, what's called an, a unicorn pursuivant. Pursuivant? It's like a badge of office and it's oh. to do with heraldry and somebody actually has a special badge of on office, but it's to do with the unicorn and it's been and it's been going since the 1300s and there's still somebody today shut up what do they do no. what do they do something to i don't know <laughs> i couldn't fight that out. it's something to do with looking after the heraldry to do with the unicorn. Oh, okay yeah because there's preserving unicorn, yeah there's unicorn like heraldry everywhere like you said right. Holyrood palace there's right. like you know, statues everywhere. You'll see them on top of market crosses. You'll yeah. see them in tapestries and wooden carvings and like all kinds of stuff. Oh, I kind of love uh, that there's someone dedicated to that because if you imagine yeah. actually if hundreds of years go by and there isn't anyone in charge of that, yeah. it would probably would just either fade away or things would get ruined or tattered or, you know what I mean? That's cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> If that's yeah. actually what they do, <laughs> I'm making up their I, job description. I, I, I'm actually not sure what they do for their job description. <laughs> Nothing to do with that at all. I know. But also, and this isn't Scottish, I'm a little bit pissed off that somewhere in America decided to do this and not Scotland. But the 
um, Lake Superior State University created a unicorn hunters group in the 1970s. Shut up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And That's it was awesome. all about staking out unicorns and hunting them. Oh my God. And apparently if you go on their website, you can still apply for a unicorn questing license. Oh, I still need to do yay! that. That's a super fun fact. I know. I love I, that. I really need. I think we both need unicorn questing licenses. I know, except I don't want to kill it. It's the only thing I have a problem with. And but we could shoot it with our cameras. That we're I would probably do. not virgins, so we can't capture. I do have a few children? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> there's that. But we could grab a virgin, so we could use it to lure the. Yeah. You know, that's what they yeah. used to do. It couldn't be that hard. We could advertise some. college campus. I mean, yeah. there's probably a few. Okay, there's probably around. a couple. Find the guy in shorts. He's probably. <laughs> there's always one guy in shorts. Does a guy work? I thought it had to be a, a girl. Can it be a guy version? Oh. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't actually say. <laughs> Quiet, sad virgin. Boy. Maybe it, oh. maybe it could be a boy. It doesn't. It didn't. It, it wasn't gender specific. True. That's true. I know. And there's a National Unicorn Day. Did you know that? It's the ninth no. of April. Did ninth you know? April. Did you I know, didn't that? know that? No, I do now though. I'm gonna Jeez, have to celebrate. You're gonna celebrate that. That's a big deal. Yeah. What That's What do awesome. you do on that day to celebrate? Drink. Wear... Drink your wee dram. I drank my whole, I drank it because now it's just melted ice. Very uh, proud of myself. It did you like it? Uh, but it wasn't as bad as I, I really was like afraid. Mm -hmm. It was drinkable, but it wasn't like delicious or anything. Let's not get crazy. But I'm I'm, I'm proud that I even got through one drink. I really yeah, I like, so um, I'm going to, I'll go for it. You know, yeah, before you talking. move on to your yeah. topic, I could have spoken about unicorns for another hour, so I'm glad you stopped me. Oh, I'm sorry, really but we're already on... at an hour, so I didn't want to. I know, I, I really didn't... went on a deep dive about Oh, no, that's unicorns. so good. That's good. Like, no, they're that so was... interesting. That was I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed when they started, the website started getting a little bit, um, practical about oh about what the really reality yeah 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 i am with you i would like a little bit more fanciful version well i covered the kelpie and there's nothing practical whatsoever about the oh, kelpie good. so hopefully good. that will keep us in the mood um uh, billy campbell who is our our editor and producer is going to edit out the next minute because i have to pee what time is it it is Billy. This is one hour. I'm writing this down. One hour, two minutes. You need to edit this part out. I gotta be real quickly so I can focus. Okay, and for those that are watching on YouTube, I am wearing my very awesome tartan leggings for I love full, them. for full, you know who gave these to me? Donna, Donna Lyon. Did she? Isn't oh, that the nice nicest one. present in the world? And they, yeah. there's a stripe that goes right in my bum. Love them. And, and I'm wearing my, I, I'm wearing what, my you Scotland, Scotland sweatshirt. I have Scarlet, watch this, you'd be so impressed. And I'm wearing my outliner t-shirt underneath. Love it. I want one of those t-shirts. I know I bought off Facebook back when Halloween mm. first came out. And you know what Mandy gave me for Christmas? Are you wearing everything Scottish? Yes. Catherine. Look at this. It's a thistle. It's a thistle necklace. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Isn't that I the love prettiest it. thing ever? So I'm I am wearing. You're I'm amazing. Waiting. <laughs> this is actually, I'm going to stand up for, if you're watching on YouTube, mm -hmm. I am wearing a tartan top that has been handmade 
by oh. my good friend Heidi, whose really? website is her her Etsy and her Facebook are called Highland Fairy, and she <gasps> makes like repurposed clothes. And this is actually from a kilt. No way! So it's made from a kilt. Can you see the strap? Yeah, it's so pretty. And she like took a took a tartan kilt and she like kind of sewed it oh into yeah the top. oh it's so yeah. fitted and cute yeah. oh i love that i'm checking it out what's it called oh, the highland highland fady oh gosh i need that in my life highland fady all over that yeah so etsy.com forward slash on etsy. shop forward slash highland fairy i'm assuming yeah she's on etsy and facebook okay, and that's she amazing. kind of upcycles yeah upcycles clothes that's so cool that's so yeah. cool Oh, I'm definitely checking that out. Are you ready for some Kelpie magic? I can't wait to hear because I actually, the only thing I really know about Kelpies is that there are some statues in yeah, Falkirk. the Falkirk wheel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So there's, I did a deep dive onto this. Uh, I listened to podcasts. I watched YouTube videos. I read articles. Um, I don't have all my sources. So just say that all of the things that I'm saying are a collection of things in those categories. I will, That's okay. I will, however, say that the best article and resource came from a student who, from Scotland who um, published an amazing YouTube video. And also he published his article. He did it for a, a class in school mm -hmm. <laughs> and he post, he posted his, um, paper on, on the, the Imger app, Imger. I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm like such a boomer. I am G U R. I, I know it. I see it all the time. I don't even know how to say I it though. The Imger, the Imger app, I believe. And his name on the Imger app is stop it. Charles, get out of my head. <laughs> oh my god i love him already All right? i'm like oh that's coming with me and he did the best roundup of information of every podcast youtube video that i wow. that i found so i'm giving a huge shout out um to this awesome kid um and so his his article i'm not going to read it but i'm just saying just shout out because he did a really good job the kelpies yeah. of scottish mythology by stop it charles get out of my head on the m graph so i highly I recommend just love his name stop right it, charles, get out of my head. and his he also had a youtube video that he created um for his channel i will actually i'm going to put that on our blog i'm going to embed okay. their youtube video on our blog along with this podcast episode because mm -hmm. he did such a great job that i figured let's just let him you watch his stuff because it's awesome he did a really good job watch his stuff you don't need to listen to us <laughs> yeah, Lord knows. <laughs> you don't need to watch this one um so all right so basically kelpies are at their base they are aquatic mythical animals um they they're pretty much for every lock in scotland of which there are what like a loch in Scotland. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> <laughs> so I was weak on the phlegm. <laughs> the loch. There are how many lochs, Lucy? You should know this. Like I have that. not got a There's thousands. Clue. There's thousands of them. And I know that loch. And I was going to say, I know the Loch Ness is the deepest, but actually that might not even be true. I don't know that that is true, but there are, there's, they say there's about one Kelpie story per each Loch. Like really? there's like a Kelpie living in all of them pretty much. Really? Yeah. Like they're wow. that prevalent. Um, their name means cult, which I find super uninteresting because they're, they are considered that what they're called because they're supposed to be water horses um oh cool to send a horse yes as in a horse not cool to send cold correct it comes from a gaelic okay. a gaelic word i thought you meant horse. cold because they were no, in the water sorry, and scottish water is cult or young freezing. male horse yes okay so they can the the most extraordinary thing about them is that they're shape-shifting which makes them extra scary because they can present yeah. themselves as a beautiful horse 
Um, and I, I did a deep dive. So uh, across all of the sources that I researched, it, <laughs> it was like they could be, they're mostly always black, but they can also uh -huh. be white, but they can also oh. be green. But then there's some that are chestnut brown and oh there are gosh. some that are ponies and i'm like okay um you all need to get together and get your story straight so actually they could be anything and that's really yeah. tricksy yeah so that's in their horse form and they're the part of their power when they're a horse is that they're they are magical at luring so it's not yeah. that they're just standing there like hoping to be and they're super dark and evil murderers. Let's just make, let's just oh get God. that straight up, the, up like from day one. Do we one. need any team content warning on this <laughs> Yes, or? yes, violence. <laughs> this is rated M for maturity. There will be drinking, swearing, and yes, and murderous beasts. So they are experts at lure, so they, they want you to come closer. So they mm -hmm. will say, for instance, like lean down on the beach and almost like invite you to climb on. It's not like they're standing there. Already. They're smart, right? So they're like, mm, they're like, come, come. Or they'll walk up to you and they're really like friendly and they want to like entice you to come on. Do so they look beautiful to entice they're you? They're absolutely beautiful. Um, and so that's just their horse form. They actually have quite a few horns. They can also present as a very handsome, handsome man. Ooh. Super good looking. Which again, I've it's obviously too... never come across any. <laughs> well, you're kelpy less. Well, you'd be dead or you'd be fingerless, but I'll get to that I'm in a be second. Maybe put opposite for five minutes of <laughs> a handsome man. <laughs> So the way that the if, if it's presenting in its handsome man form, the way that uh -huh. it lures young women uh -huh. is that it will sh shed virgin. Sh I don't think it cares because it just wants to kill you. It'll take whoever. So it will shed tears because it's hoping it's hoping that they they will reach up and brush the tears away. So it's very intentional that they will they lure their victims. So they'll be like, oh, I'm so sad or whatever. And then they'll really? cry. And then you, when, because when you brush the tear away, the person, the victim who's brushing their tears away will be so overcome with love, they'll be bonded to them. And then the Kelpie can do whatever they want. So they can be it's like- like some serious, like twisted oh, narcissistic it, shit. It is dark. It's like a dark soap opera. It's like the Kelpie is, um, getting into somebody's psyche and right? emotionally abusing it's a them. Little, it's a tiny bit emotionally manipulative. Yeah. I know, right? So okay, that's, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not keen on that. No, no matter it's how dark. good looking he is. But if you are really observant to this handsome man form, you will notice, however, that they have seaweed entwined in their hair. So if you ah. see a super hot guy, on the beach of a loch and he has seaweed in his hair run so it doesn't grand. matter how like hot he is <laughs> don't touch his tears have um, you ever seen um have you ever seen a tv program called the mighty bush <laughs> no you need to check it out oh, is it so, it's so funny okay i'm ready like now. really surreal it's like just hilarious comedy and there's yeah there's someone there with like seaweed hair oh seaweed hair oh my god that's really random yeah. um oh actually just remember something i i wanted to ask you um so back to when they sh when they present themselves as horse form just really uh -huh. quickly um there is supposedly there is kelpies that are in the aberdeenshire area which is your neck of the woods yeah they have a snake mane what yes but only aberdeenshire kelpies have this snake mane and i've looked and i looked and i googled my little heart out and i couldn't find any more information about that but that was only in your area so what's going on oh my goodness i know i wonder scary i'm scary. gonna watch out for that is it and only in Locks, it's only at locks, it's not well, rivers. I'm gonna get to that in a second, actually. Okay, um, so what I want to know though is for the Aberdeenshire Kelpie with a snake mane, what kind of what are they using to lure their prey? 
because I'm pretty sure anyone who sees a, a horse with a snake mane, I feel like that would be like red flags. And I just um, feel like that poor horse gets That seems so kind of I feel a little like, bit yeah, rude, I feel, I actually. actually so I actually, go into that. I just feel like I feel bad for that Kelpie because they're killing no one. Like they're on their desire. Yeah, we, on, we are sort of like the, maybe we're the poor cousin area oh, of scotland no that's <laughs> not what the, i was going we get the rubbish ones because you know the oh. highlands and edinburgh and glasgow get that's true oh burn. sorry not saying that's true <laughs> like you're right you are but i just feel bad this poor kelpie probably gets no one but that's Do you know what i've actually never heard of it i'm gonna have to look into okay. it okay well i yeah i thought that was super weird mm -hmm. and random and interesting um, okay, so they can present, like I said, as the horses. S something interesting about the horses, however, is that if you look on their hooves, a Kelpie horse's hooves will be on backwards. <gasps> which is That's so creepy. Super creepy. Yeah, super creepy. Yeah, out of a really creepy horror movie. I know. And then I they have nightmares. I know. And then they also say that for the for the men. If they're presenting as a man, they also have hooves instead of feet at the very bottom, which makes me a little nauseous. I'm not going to lie. Uh. Right? So that's really creepy. Um, I think overwhelming majority of the time, they're either this handsome man or, a, or in horse form, but that it has happened that they also can show up as a beautiful woman and that uh -huh. are a lot of times naked and they will be in the shallow area. So they're really like, they're really working it to get you to come in. Yeah. I mean, they're what, showing their what guy is gonna, gonna, yeah. And so guys are gonna come like does running. Their, does their hair cover their? I Probably not. I mean, they're like, check me out. I want you to come in. And the guys are like, I'm like, I'll be right there. But I do have to say when, when either in male or female form, when they're presenting, they are always soaking wet. Even if they've yeah. been out of the water for quite some time, their magic is so strong. They're okay. always really wet. So if you see a man, a sexy man, super hot, se super sexy, but, but dripping, he's got sea seaweed hair, yeah, and, and he's, he's wet. dripping of sweat. Oh, no, not sweat, just wet. Yeah, but I would think it was sweat because yeah. I didn't automatically We're talking, assume and, that it was and I water. feel like the horse hoof feet then is in a dead giveaway. Yeah. Steer clear. Just say no steer thank you. Clear. Stay strong. <laughs> Stay strong, my friends. So they really want you. So what happens when you do get gotten by a Kelpie? Yeah, so what happens? So a couple of different things can happen. One okay. is that they will just simply grab hold. So they're very sticky. They have a magical Heck, power that wet and sticky at the well, same time. Well, come on, you know they have. It's their magic. <laughs> I don't power. know. That's why I was. Their magic power it bonds you to them. So either emotionally bonds in the case of the wet tear being well, wiped that's from the face. Creepy. I don't like that. And yeah. but also physically bond. So people that actually do mount the horse, they're like, oh yeah, I want to ride because the pony's like, hop on, friend. And they're like, I'm in. And then they hop on and then they are literally stuck, like they cannot get off. And so then the horse will immediately take oh, you into the water and drown your ass. Like velcro or glue? Super yes, glue. Stronger. Like you cannot stronger than super glue. Yeah. Because you can't got stronger than super you glue. You can't, yeah, but super glue, like you have to wait for it to dry a few seconds. You have to blow on it, like kind of do this with your hand. This is like instant. And then they just swarm right. Now some stories tell of just you're just dove to your death and that's it and they're just never seen again uh, again oh that sounds awful Other you stories, it's actually worse because the kelpie will actually eat the person oh! and then, depending on the story they will spit the entrails back up onto the beach so there's just entrail party <laughs> don't <laughs> spit your whiskey that sounds a bit Bit like right? my cat when he's been hunting <laughs> it's a bit caddish i'm gonna leave your entrails on the yeah. porch yes. as a present it's like evidence like i got you <clears throat> evidence mm -hmm. that i'm good at killing things exactly so there's a very famous story probably the most <clears throat> the most favorite kelpie story which one revolves around 
uh, a group of young boys and they were all sons of the different chieftains of Scotland. Like they all mm -hmm. got together. There's one rendition that's read by um, Legends and Myths or Myths and Legends podcast. He does such a good job. He makes it funny because he like rewrites -write it in his own words. Uh -huh. um, and so basically all the all the clans get together and all the chieftains sons are like hey let's go out on the party boat and like go for go for a swim so they all leave leave this big gathering and go out on a boat together and while they're out they come across this kelpie in horse form which is like a stretch limo so one by one they all mount the horse and then they look behind it's them like really yes, yes, yes. and it gets extended so they're like oh look oh my there's God. magically room for one more and then the next one hops on and they're like oh look there's one more and then the next one hops on so all of them i think there was six in this story or six or seven and then other famous stories there's like there's as many as nine or ten um and then the last one to mount is the only one who isn't a, the son of a chief he's actually the sword bearer or the shield bearer for one of one of uh -huh. the prince the one of the princes and he is the last one on because he's the least important of them so he's left left he for gets last. to go at the butt end yes he goes the so butt end. when he goes on however instead of holding the horse because there's barely any room he actually has one hand on the prince in front of him that he's holding on. And uh -huh. then he's only touched the horse with like two fingers of his right or left hand. I can't remember which one. Uh -huh. So he realizes that everybody is stuck. So everybody's like, Whoa, oh my gosh, this is so fun. We're going for a ride. And so, uh, so he's the last one on. So the horse is like, ha ha ha, I have them all. And he goes charging into the water and this <laughs> dude realizes what's happening. So he actually takes probably his jerk from his waist kilt. belt, kilt, whatever. And he mm -hmm. starts sawing. Oh my God. Fingers. So he has uh, one free hand because he had the hand that was holding on to the prince. So, and his fingers are stuck only. So he saws his fingers away, the ones that are stuck off <gasps> of the Kelpie. And he manages to get away and to swim oh my free goodness. as the rest of them are all laughing because they don't still haven't caught wind of what's going on. And uh -huh. the last sounds that he hears are the, the sounds of the princes laughing as they all get. That's so creepy right like so the so, survivors of a lot of these kelpie stories are like fingerless because there's quite uh, a number of these stories of people who have had to cut off their hands when they've gotten so stopped. the people that get taken away while they're laughing while they're going underwater yeah. stuck to a giant little Ugh, horse right? that's like yes weird <laughs> yes. and dripping but sticky Extend at the same time mm -hmm. it, are they somehow um are they somehow hypnotized into thinking that what's happening to them is good? I think for a minute, for sure. And then they suddenly realize yeah. when they're underwater, like, oh my God. And then by that time, it's just too late. Yeah. So th that particular story actually goes on for quite some time. And one thing I'm learning very quickly, and this is only our first ep podcast episode, but one thing I that I'm becoming to realize with these Scottish stories is that uh, they like a story. These stories, like, they go on. <laughs> There's, like, other family members that are involved, and then, like, time changes happen. <laughs> There's a lot of characters. So this one story went on for quite a bit, and then it involves, like, uh, but going back three weeks before that happened, there was that same Kelpie who, like, betwixt um, the, the sister of one of the chieftain's sons or one of the princes uh -huh. who was also he she fell for the tear trick by this same kelty kelpie and was by the handsome man by the handsome the... man yeah but it was the same one who ends up drowning all of her her brother and all of the other princes <laughs> and then evil i know and then there was the guy who cut himself free ends up going to um there's like this druid magic drool dude druid dude that like all the chieftains know and they're like we think this guy can help you but we're not going to tell anybody about it because if it doesn't work we don't want to look dumb but like you're just the, sh the sword you're just the shield bear guy anyways so if it doesn't work we don't care about you but if it does work you could get all of our sons back 
So he's like, all right, well, I'll Did give he manage to rescue them? So wait. So he goes to this old guy who was like blind and he's like a hermit and he lives by himself by the top of a mountain. And he's like, how are you going to help me with these, with the get, with this Kelpie getting all these, our, our princes back. And he's like, well, if you trust me, like put your hand in this magic cauldron of fire. And he was like, my hand just got cut off. I'm not going to like go put it in your fire. But he was like, just do it. So he does. And then it actually heals his hand and his fingers are back and it didn't even hurt and he was like oh dude goodness. i'm in i totally am down with you whatever you have to say so he's like all right here's the plan he's like on sunheim am i saying that right sanheim sawin Sa oh what <laughs> sawin on sawin <laughs> is that right okay it looks like sam when yeah, you read it sawin sawin yeah God, I just feel like an American right now. So, For Halloween. Okay. Yes. So he was like, that's coming up in a very short and amount of time. I actually might be saying it wrong. So oh, don't. No, like, don't. You are not. Don't come for me. It just looks like Sunheim is how I want to say it. They're like, when that time comes, the doors to the other world will open. Yep. And the you veil can... is very thin. Yes. At they're that like, time. so you can get them back. And he was like, I'm in, I'm down with it. So they buy their time. And in the meantime, there's a lot of drama with the girl who was like in love with the Kelpie. And the, there's a, this whole subplot that I'm not, I'm not going to go into. <laughs> this sounds, what this sounds like is that, when was this written? Like what, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s? Literally zero idea. Some... No idea. It sounds like, they literally had nothing else to do apart from sit around and make their story longer and longer it, and longer. That's and what longer it felt like. Longer. But I highly recommend this podcast episode because he tells it so well. Okay, so I'm well. have to listen. Yeah, so well. Um, and I'm like dicing it down to it's like bare bone parts. Um, so long story short, too late, they kind of make a trade and the sons of the chieftains do come out alive he this this shield bearer ends up saving the lives of all the uh -huh. ten sons so everybody's rejoicing and then they made a trade for one of the women in the village who ended up like getting falling under the same spell being thinking that she's magically in love with this kelpie handsome man version so she actually ends up getting drowned which is you know like she but but she doesn't know that. So she's like happy as a clam when she goes to drown to her death, thinking like, oh, yeah. I'm spending eternity with my with my Kelpie husband. And maybe, maybe things were fine. Like, what do we yeah. even know? Maybe, maybe it was good. He has but, a cool hair, too. Let's he, face it. Yeah. I mean, he's very handsome. How bad uh -huh. could it be? So it, there was actually a happy ending. But what I thought was interesting is that this story of the chieftain's sons is told. Um, and mentioned in a few different sources, but only this one, uh, there was only one source who had the whole extended version. Most mm -hmm. of the stories are like, oh, it's a very famous story where these princes all get carried away and one guy cuts himself free, end of story. And there is this whole second part of the story, which I thought was even cooler than the first yeah, part. Yeah, so, I think it's cooler. Yeah, I, I I totally enjoyed it. So I thought that was really, really neat. That's so, they, so fascinating. I know. So they, they obviously think that um well here before i do that so just here here's my kelpie fun facts how's this well i'll i'll count to your fun facts with my fun facts um, okay what's your fun facts yes. well the fun facts are that they could actually be um you can actually take power over a kelpie if you can get hold of their bridle now some don't have a bridle uh -huh. some some do so uh, do they only have a bridle if they're the horse? What if they're the man? I know, then the I woman? think there's no bridle. I know okay. I was I had questions about this as well. So many questions, but it is a mythical creature, so it's hard to I say. Know. We I suppose because it because it's mythical, we can kind of actually make up our own answers to some of yes. that as well. And maybe the bridle of the horse form becomes like his shirt when he's a man, you know. Like I'm not sure because the man is not part naked. Of the the, the man's not naked. That's not on. Yeah, I thought I don't he was like know. super hot and handsome. Why That's is he true. not naked? I don't know. I think, kind of feel like he should be. If the woman's <laughs> naked. True. That's true. <laughs> 
That is true. Probably that weird double standard, you know. I know, I know. So you can you can control a Kelpie if you get their bridle, if you get it off of uh -huh. them. And not only when you get their bridle, do you have the power over that Kelpie? You have the power of every Kelpie. What? When you get that bridle. Some I know. Indiana Jones right? shit going on right, right there. I know. And it is rumored that the clan... Um, oh, my dog is like whining to come in. I hope no one can hear her. The clan, where is it? Which one is it? I'm gonna, I want to make sure I say the right one. The clan McGregor, this I find uh -huh. fascinating, is rumored to have, to own a Kelpie bridle. A Kelpie bridle? Yes, that has been passed. And it was found, it was taken from a beast near Loch Schlacht. So they even know where, you know where I am sure that it's not called that. What? My pronunciation. How do you spell it? Spot on. You can't tell from the way I'm saying it, no. how it's spelled. How I am a, you spell it? I am offended. <laughs> it's Loch Schlacht. It's S-L-O-C-H-D. S-L-O-C-H-D. Hence Schlacht. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so Schlacht. how right? Schlacht. How oh, cool is that? And I That's like cool. seriously Googled around as fast and furiously as I can because I want to know more about that. So if you so, if who are there photos? listening, are there photos no, of their cow people? And this is mentioned like all over the place. I'm like, I'm gonna need more information about that because that's awesome. And if whoever is listening or watching, if you are part of the McGregor clan and you know anything about this, I need to know. That's amazing. Right? I think that's super cool. So they do say that occasionally there's there's a stories of, of men being able to enslave a Kelpie because of this bridal feature. Uh -huh. And so they said that there's actually many castle stories that involve the work of a Kelpie because they're, wow. according to one website, they're 10 times stronger than a horse. And what according do they look to, like? Well, according to another website, With they were a hundred times more. <laughs> But you More know powerful. how you said they're shapeshifters and yes. sometimes they look like horses and sometimes mm -hmm. they look like super hot, handsome men and sometimes yeah. they look like their natural women. state is a horse is the horse. Their natural shape. state is a horse. a horse. They don't look like some weird golem type. No, they're like character. horses is how they naturally look. Okay. So when you strip them of their bridle, that they're in their horse form and then they they can just work then as a wow. horse and they and they'll do anything to get their bridle back so that so they'll be like these mean kings that or lairds will be like okay great you want your your thing back then build my castle and then it will it'll do it because it'll want its bridle back however according to a lot of these tales at the end the kelpie always gets their revenge so after oh, the they? castles are built mm -hmm. The Kelpies get their bridles back because their masters are like, awesome, job here is done. Here's your stupid bridle, whatever, I got my castle. And then many times those Kel those Kelpies will cast an evil curse or a spell. And then lo and behold, all the family members will die. There's a very famous story of Graham of Morphe and the Kelpie who did exactly what I just described. And uh, at the end, he, the Kelpie casts a curse and the whole Graham lineage dies because everybody ends up dying shortly thereafter. And you would have thought ways. that they would have learned their lesson and not given the bridal back by now. I know, right? Yeah. Why didn't they just yeah. keep, well, I guess the McGregor clan were smart and they didn't give it back. Yeah. They were the only ones. Yeah, so super interesting. Um, That's so interesting. I know. Do you know, I didn't actually know any of that before. I hang my okay. head in shame. I didn't oh, know cool. any of it. Well, I'm glad you learned something new. But I do yeah. have to bring up one little teeny tiny thing. I know we're running super long. But I do yeah. want to run one thing because I thought this was interesting. I thought that I was done with my research after that. However, on the Wikipedia page, um, there was a little link that said like kelpies are often confused with um like kelpie can be kind of an umbrella term 
for uh, for water horse in general, but in fact, okay. there's almost like different species of malevolent water horses. And there's one that is even worse than the Kelpie that also really? plagues the lochs of Scotland. And that actually these ones, and I cannot pronounce it, but the spelling is, it's a hyphenate, two words hyphenated. The first one is spelled like the word each. So it's E-A-C-H, E-E-H, each. And then it's hyphen. And then it looks like usage, but it's U-I-S-G-E. And that the two words together are the name of this beast. So it's like each, I'm just going to say usage for short. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's not, you know, what is I, it? It, I don't know, but it's, it's obviously Gaelic. Yeah, it and, is. And um, it's like, yeah, it's like, ugh, Gaelic has, yeah. yeah, Gaelic has okay. a funny way that I have to say that I'm not, I'm not. I if they say it's know. anglicized as like, uh, A-U-G-H-I-S-Y. Auriski? I don't, I feel like you wouldn't pronounce the G. Auriski or Echuskia. It's totally different. What's it called? <laughs> Here, I'm going to show you the spelling. Can you see it? Is it backwards well, in your camera? I would if I hadn't put, put my safari on. Oh, so it's like each, E-A-C-H-U-I-S-U-G-E. Oh, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you would say that, yeah. actually. I've got no idea. Maybe that's something that I need to learn if All I'm right, going to well, have a put, Scottish podcast. Put that on your to-do list. But <laughs> this one is supposed to be way, way worse than the Kelpie. And according to this, Wikip and it has its own Wikipedia page, so I kind of yeah, just opened it up. Yeah, I just trust that it's right. It's Wikipedia got a six pack, though. I know this it's, one. it's a little bit hot, except for it's he's like horse. a man. He's like a man with a horse head. So he has, and I it all kind of weaves together. Like the stories are very similar, and there's a lot of cutting people's hands off to free themselves. Um, um what what I do find though since you're on the Wikipedia page that I thought was interesting oh, was that yeah, this, this one however can not only be a horse a pony a handsome man but it can also be are you ready for this uh -huh. an enormous bird <laughs> what <laughs> How? Every, how is a bird luring people to their deaths? I guess people are like, what yes. the hell is that? Does it fly over people right? and like lean in and well, catch and then it, them? it gives an example. It says such as the boobry, but I don't know what a boobry is. So, and I didn't click on it. It is a clickable link, but I was like, these things are getting so weird around here. <clears throat> okay, so th the only thing that sort of separates this creature from the Kelpie, however, is if you can overtake it, if you can get it away from the water. So if you can separate okay. it, like if you can lure it away from a body of water and into like an interior part of land, you can actually uh -huh. like work it and use it like a horse. But the second that it like gets its eyes on water, you're screwed and it's gonna- it's gonna So you have to you. make sure that your castle is not anywhere near a loch. Yes or um yep. anything like that yes but this this and creature has safe. has claimed a lot of victims human also cattle and sheep i guess it claims a lot of times as well yeah. um so yeah so this whole thing with with it being near water so according to that to that wikipedia site it's the lochs that this creature inhabits, all of the lochs. And then the, uh -huh. Kelpie, the Kelpies are relegated to the streams and the rivers. Oh, and there's so like Kelpies aren't there, anything to do with lochs? But this, that's, this site was the only one that made that differentiation. Oh, okay. And all the other sources and videos and everyone else just said Kelpies are everywhere. So I think... I don't not really sure how to make sense of that, except they clearly didn't do the exhaustive research that I 
personally put in for this podcast because I am a (laughs) professional. (laughs) I just think if everyone had done their homework, they would have known. Yeah. But let's just, they can all just be stand corrected as of right now. So I don't know what to make of that. Um, but there's clearly a, a distinction that some people are very keen, keen to make. Um, and I do have to say that this extra vicious variant does have sister species breeds that show up in other Celtic oh, really? places. Like the Irish have... Uh, a variant of this called that oh that is the same that's that augiski the a-u-g-h-i-s-k spelling and the manx water horse is also equivalent to this deeper darker Uh uh-huh so it's like the kelpie's like evil darker twin cousin do you think that it a lot of it was to do with like encouraging people to stay away from water because water could be dangerous 100 percent, yeah so especially because i guess the most common victim in the stories are children so i think that oh, parents most okay. definitely to so they don't have to worry about their kids playing near the water's edge or like yeah. watch out for the kelpie and that's why there's a kelpie in every body of water because there's yeah. so many lochs and streams and rivers in scotland they're ev- they're in everyone's backyard yeah. so it would make sense for are they to know i don't what- have one in my backyard well, that's because you're in poor aberdeenshire which you've already mentioned was the <laughs> armpit of scotland it's basically what you said <laughs> i'm just kidding you did not say that i, I didn't like that. that maybe perhaps other parts of scotland that shall remain nameless <laughs> I'm not here to make any enemies. I, I don't know. And I haven't traveled far. I'm just making fun of you. Oh, apologies to everyone. <laughs> Trust me, America has lots of armpits, not just one. Yeah, um, but I do have a river near me. So maybe oh, I should go and look and see if I can find a Kelpie. Scotland's like the land of lochs. There's Although like maybe million. I don't want to find a Kelpie. Mm-mm. So they do, yeah, they do think the origin is definitely to have you know, it's like to stay away from like ponies near the shore too. I'm sure wild horses were probably everywhere too back in the day. Uh-huh. And also to like keep young women away from strange men. Handsome men. Yeah. Uh, with seaweed hair. Yeah, specifically seaweed hair. So specifically protect- seaweed hair. Protection stories. And I, what I think too is there, I was trying to figure out if there was other countries in the world that had of their own kind of water horses and I think the most famous one is the bunyip from Australia but I was like oh I've heard of that yeah but I'm like isn't that interesting because Australia was settled by who lots and lots of Scots yeah so I wonder if they didn't if that's not related is there one from America then because America had lots of Scots they did and I'm not that I could come up with Mm. no but that doesn't mean I, I not, I didn't, that doesn't mean it, you didn't it's not a obviously thing. Obviously research enough, Karen, for this episode. I thought, unearth- I thought that unearthing the deep, dark second cousin was, was enough. Super interesting. I yeah, did I think not so. know that. I feel like I'm an expert now on Kelpies. I know, me too. What I wanted to know though, so in 2013, there was the artist who created the Kelpie sculptures uh-huh. in Falkirk. And then I was wondering like, why would you build this? Why would you build a monument to like the most horrific creature of the land? But then he was really trying to like harness the representation of like the horse power and all the yeah. influences that the horses had towards uh-huh. the development of Scotland over the centuries. It was actually a nod to the power of horse, hor- literally. But also horses. I think because us Scots are, well, I'm saying it like I'm representing everyone and I'm sure I'm not representing everybody, but us Scots are quite proud of like our mythical folklore. I know. I think it's amazing. Yeah. I see. So even if it's an evil creature, it's still something that you're proud of because it's something that. It's like a nod to all of that, which I love. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, um, those Lucy, are amazing. They are made. Lucy, yeah. you haven't even seen our books. 
I know. You haven't seen them. I I'm going to show them to you some. right now. I'm going to show we you. We have some here. books that we have made specially for you. So if you want to have something to write in, Cover. we have three out. This one that Karen is showing us just now is called The Celtic Castle Dreams. It's so thick. How many pages? I know. It's like the perfect sketchbook. There's a uh, so hundred cool. pages. Wow. But then we've we sprinkled in some gorgeous images for we've you. We've got some nice castle pictures. Inside. Oh, and by the way, I did end up making this one have cream paper. I was able to do that. I don't even tell you that. I love it. It's so and some I'm nice Celtic um, patterns. I am buying myself one. I just bought myself all three. So this one's the scones of the scones. <laughs> the scones. <laughs> scones of Scotland. This scones one's, of this Scotland. one's strawberry. This one is blueberry. No, but this one, this one Lucy created. This one is all about standing stones and stone circles. And every 10 pages or so, there is information all about different standing stones and stone circles in Scotland with some photos I know this one's my favorite the one from Orkney oh I love that the ring of Brodker is that beautiful the one? yep there's a lot in here I didn't realize I mean I knew how many but it's much more impressive in person nice I know I love that and then one. what's the last one the last one is my favorite though I made my notes for the podcast in this one did you Yes. The wee fairy forest, fairy forest journal. Yes. And so this one has lime paper in it with a cute little fairy symbols on each page. But then this one is sprinkled oh, nice. little fairy images. These remind me of your little paintings. The mushrooms. The magic mushrooms. Little fairy doors. Fairies. I'm gonna have you speaking like a Scot before we're right? out, you know. I hope yeah. so. In fact, I might have to give you a little test every week. <gasps> okay, do it. Yeah. Well, not this week because okay. I need to think of something. But next, starting next time, I'm gonna give you a test. Okay. I think where I'm I am going to see how well you can pronounce some okay. Scottish phrases. Scottish phrase. See, okay, do it again. Scottish phrases. Scottish phrases. Phrases. <laughs> my dog is like knocking so down my door. It's so good. So, what else do we have to mention before we go? Okay, well, let's see. You can, if you want to follow our funny stories, you can check out Instagram. We are one Scott, one not with the number, the number one Scott, one not everywhere we have a website where you can check out our books and our... also sorry go no you go to you you go on our website there's also a contact us form if you oh, have yes. any interesting <sighs> stories that you want us to talk about on yeah, if here, you're so yes and if you're we a are gonna if you're a mcgregor clan member and you know about yay! the bridal i need to know <laughs> to know so Obviously, you don't have to be Scottish, but if you've ever been to Scotland on holiday, if you have encountered a ghost in a castle, if you have stayed at the Royal Mile in Edinburgh and mm -hmm. gone into the vaults and had a spooky ghost story, if you have mm -hmm. ancient members of your family that took part in the Battle of Culloden, mm -hmm. anything to do with yes. Scotland... And if we you have, a, we do. And if you have a whiskey recommendation for me, I would love to try what you would consider yeah. be a good, a good whiskey. Cause I have no clue. And so you can find the form on our website at mm -hmm. onescotonenot.com. We do. And we also have a YouTube channel. So if you would rather watch a podcast instead of listen to one, that is going to be an option as yeah. well. And that's you also can see what tartan we're reading today check out my rad tartan leggings <clears throat> yeah <laughs> um thanks for listening to our jibber jabber and we will be back soon with another one on more fun scottish lore mysteries ghost spooky stories fairy stories and all sorts of magical fun goodness we will we will thank you for listening today okay, okay. bye, bye.
I'm going to do 